Okay, guys, and joining us right now from Arlington at his Airbnb at his Texas Rangers infielder, Jonathan Ornelas, back in the big leagues. Bud, what's going on? Okay, nothing much. How are you guys doing? Just hanging out, you know, talking Rangers baseball, which has been kind of fun lately. What has it been like, you know, since you come back, they start winning ball games. I think you're the magic touch. <laughs> uh, I know. I love it. I love winnings. Winnings always fun, you know. So, what do you? What do you? What's What's your role when there's a walk off win? You just storm the field if you're not on it, and then and, and uh, start punching the guy. What do you do? Yeah. So my guy, my my role has been chasing, trying to flag the guy down. You know, take a couple water bottles with me, maybe a bag of seeds, just pouring it on people, trying to get as much as I can on the person who hit the walk off. But if it gets on other people, so be it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, what, what do they call that? Collateral damage. You know, yeah, that's... exactly. <laughs> <laughs> hey, okay, whatever happens. But yeah, so this has been this has been good. Um, what what, what uh, you know? September call ups aren't like they used to be. You know, you, you might remember probably right after you were drafted, the rule was still in place where teams could just call up whoever they wanted who was on the forty man. But they only have two spots now. So what? What do you make of this opportunity, especially now that, that Corey Seager is going to be out for a while? I think I just just trying to trying to take advantage of the opportunity. I guess just trying to see see when I can get in there, and when I do get in there, just trying to display everything that I can do to to try to help the team. Well, you know, just put together some good at bats to whatever that may be. Maybe moving a guy over, or just trying to get some going. Um, <laughs> same thing on defense. You know, just trying to make the plays that are supposed to be made, and if a couple. Fan, flashy, fancy ones come in every here and there. I'm not opposed to it. Yeah. The uh, the, the, the other night, um, A, I thought you had successfully turned that double play that they ended up overturning. I thought that I thought that, that call should have stood. I, I never I never saw a definitive replay. Yeah. Uh, that was a heck of a turn. And then um, there was a play up the middle where it was like a tweener between you and Marcus that ended up going for an infield hit. You went to cover the bag. Did you what 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 was ta- what was that play? Um, did you and Marcus talk about it afterward? I mean, it just seemed like it was a ball that was just destined to be a hit. Yeah, yeah. So it's kind of one of those tweeners that's that's you know as a, as you're in the lefty shift, uh, shortstop's kind of up the middle more, and second baseman's a little bit uh, over to to the to the pull side. So it's kind of one of those balls. It's not hard, hit hard enough for for me to kind of just angle straight across. I kind of have to, I'd have to come in to get it. And same and same thing. Same would have to kind of angle himself, kind of in to get it as well. Uh, I think we ended up talking about it. It probably would have been e- an easier play for me to go get it. But I think that's just uh, me playing with him more often, just knowing kind of sure. our our zones and our boundaries, and then kind of knowing how far he can go, how far I can go. But I yeah. think it's definitely one of those things where he saw that I kind of w- wanted to make a move to it, and he like realized that. And then as I was like, oh, it's kind of in his territory where I know he can get to it. That's when I was like, okay, let me go cover the bag just in case he wants to come the short way. And that's when he kind of hesitated and then ended up going to get it, and he ended up being safe. Uh, I think the play would have still been super bang, bang, because Chisholm can right. run for sure. But yeah. it's, it's one of those things where if we communicate early, say, hey, uh, I'll go in front and you go behind, or one of those things where it's like, hey, if you can get to it, get to it. But I think that just comes with with uh, playing with each other, just kind of knowing yeah. uh, each other. Yeah, yeah I mean, totally and, even, and even yeah. if you're not playing – I mean, just being in the clubhouse every day and around the team has got to be super beneficial to to you. So, what are, what are you trying to pick up during a game that you're you're uh, uh, not in the lineup? Yeah. So yesterday, I started. Uh, I've done it before, but yesterday I started kind of getting more into it. I started picking Semyon's brain since he didn't play yesterday. We were kind of sitting together most of the game yesterday, so I started picking his brain about kind of what he thinks about when he's in the box, as well as far as like other things. But I kind of asked him as well, like when he was coming up, what were things like? Was he an everyday guy? Uh, it went like how he took it when he didn't play and stuff like that. And so he just told me like just to keep it simple, you know, just try to get your work in, make sure you 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 prepare because you always have to be prepared. You never know. You could not be in the lineup, and then first second inning something happens, bang, you're in the game. And if you didn't do anything that you wanted to take an off day, then you're not prepared for whatever that opportunity is. So he, he's taught me to, to make sure you're always prepared. Um, and then I was talking to Seager also later in the game, and I was kind of asking him on the hitting side, like, what's your what's your approach when you're in the box? What do you think about 
because he's he's different, you know, like he's <laughs> he's, different. He's, he's such a good hitter. So I wanted to pick his brain about what he thinks about and, and all this other stuff. And he just told me, he said, I just try to put my body in a good position all the time, because regardless of what the pitcher throws, what the pitch does, if I put myself in a position uh, that I want to be in, he said, it doesn't matter what the guy throws, I'll be able to hit it. He said he's always on, on fastball timing and and trying to swing at strikes. So I think that that's that's kind of helping me clear out things that I that I may have some doubt about. Well, that's good to hear that, it, you know, because you, you typically think that Corey Seager just goes up and swings in the first damn pitch. He, he, <laughs> he skates. And a lot of times that's how it plays out. But, uh, there, yeah, he, he's, he's, uh, he, he definitely is different. He's so good, uh, like yeah. you mentioned. But uh, <laughs> that's pretty funny. I would think that, that you want to be with Marcus as much as possible. I know you, you take the ground balls together. He never takes a day off from grounders. I think that's just probably the example of kind of the perfect example for a young guy to try to emulate. No doubt. That's why I like to to talk to him about a lot of different things, so, like especially on defense as well. Like, whenever I take uh, ground balls to second base, I ask him his footwork and how he feels and what he tries to feel when he's fitting the ball to second base and all that good stuff. So I just try to pick his brain about they both have different things, and I try to, to, to pick everything from everyone and try to learn a little bit from everyone that I can. Yeah. Uh, I, I saw I, I saw you after the game. You seemed pretty dang dang happy to see Sandro Fabian. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's, pretty, that's pretty cool for him, huh? Yeah, well, yeah. What what uh, we didn't get a chance to talk to him because he, he showed up after uh, we were done with the clubhouse. Yeah, how excited is he? Oh, I mean, he he. Did, <laughs> we were talking to him about it, and he couldn't get any words out. The only thing he could say was, "I'm happy." <laughs> I think that's how much in shock he was. To, like, he was still trying to believe it, you know? So I'm like, hey, you got to find a new word when you get interviewed and all that stuff. Like, you have to use some different words. You can't just say happy, happy, happy. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he's, he's excited, and, and we're all really happy for him. I mean, he's having a great year, so it's, it's really hard to find someone that's more deserving than him. Yeah, he, he – um, he's he's a strong guy. I mean, he's, he's a good-looking guy. Like, does he, he – he passes the, the body test, you know. He's looking at him, like, this guy. This guy looks like he can play, uh, yeah. but he's really good. I think you're aiming that at me, Jeff. Are you directing that at me? Yeah, I don't have it's body body yeah, it's very similar. But what, uh, what what's he do well? And everybody says he hits left hander as well. But I mean, he probably does more than that. No, he he crushes the baseball. It doesn't matter who's throwing. I mean, it could be a righty lefty. It could be the switch a switch pitcher. I mean, you could throw the rosin back at him, and he's gonna hit it. I mean, he he can swing it. Um, but he no, he does a lot of things. Well, he's a good outfielder. I like the way he plays outfield. He he. I mean, he might have him and Adolis might have. They're they're pretty comparable arms. I mean, it's it's oh good. He leads. He leads. I think all of baseball, minor leagues and big leagues included, in assists this year. He has like sixteen, I think. So I mean, he can he can throw the baseball also, and then he takes good routes. Uh, he's more he he plays right just because of his arm, but he's played some center down in Round Rock, and I mean, he's tracking balls down like he's a natural center fielder. So I think he can play anywhere in the outfield. He, he's got good reads. He's he's good on defense, and then he he can swing the bat. So I think he's he's going to be just fine. Yeah, that's it's good to hear. I mean, I, you yeah. Know, it, he, people who don't know, he was a Giants prospect for a long time, signed with the Rangers last year as a minor league free agent, had a really nice year, and in the late in the year, it was in the conversation as a guy uh, yeah. to, to maybe help the team, and uh, now he's got the opportunity. So I hope yep. uh, I hope the Angels throw a bunch of left-handers. I, I'm guessing he's going to face mostly lefties, but it, it you know the Rangers need to see these guys. They need to see more of you. They yeah. need to see – because uh, yep. you never know what's going to happen in off season. Who's going to get traded? Who's going to get right. hurt? I don't know. Riding a bicycle? Shit! I don't know. Anything can happen. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I guess I shouldn't make light of that because of the poor hockey player that was killed last week riding a bike. But um, things happen, and, and yeah. that's why you have depth in players. But how how was a uh, how was Sandro's English? I would say it's pretty good, honestly. It, he, okay. he gets by. He it, it's funny because I mean, obviously I haven't known him for too long, but I feel like I've known him for a long time and we get along so well. But I think we met. You said he signed last year, so we met in spring training that year. And even then, like his English was still iffy. It was like he would. The only thing he knew how to say was when he went to Chipotle, it was white rice, black bean, chicken. 
That's it. That's, that's, <laughs> that's what, that's what, that was his English. And so now to see like kind of not just his development in baseball, but also like learning the the, the native language here in the states is yeah. is awesome. I mean, he can now hold his own in a conversation with random people when he goes. He can go okay. to the store and order anything he needs or buy if he needs to get something for the house. And, and sometimes he'll ask me for help. He, like, hey, am I saying this right or is this the correct way to use it? And yeah. most of the time, like, he's not afraid. And I love that. Like, he's not scared to just go out and have a conversation in English because that's the best way to learn. Yeah, if, if you uh, are watching this for the first time, Jonathan's been on our show now three times. He's from Arizona, the Phoenix area, Glendale, uh, well, Kellis High School, I think. And um, he's bilingual. And I, I think that's got to be a huge advantage for you. I mean, you can talk to Adolis Garcia in his most comfortable situation, and then you can go and talk to Corey Singer and Marcus. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's hard. I mean, it's, it's, awesome. it's rare. It's rare. Yeah. It's, 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 yeah. I love it. I mean, getting along with everybody, it's definitely, it's definitely nice. It's definitely it's also being able to help those guys that, that have, are having a hard time adjusting to English in anywhere, even here in the big leagues or even uh, some of the younger guys that I've been helping throughout, throughout the years. So, it's it's definitely a privilege. It's definitely awesome to know two languages. Well, well I wish I could. He, he, Jonathan <laughs> once translated for me with a JP Martinez interview in Frisco. So the good news in the big leagues is they have Raul to translate. So yeah. you're, you're off the hook on translation, yeah. right? That's you're funny. you're you you've got other things to worry about. You don't need to worry about me and my uh, inability to speak a language I probably should have learned years and years ago. <laughs> Yeah, we're so, gonna blame you, Jeff. That's yeah, funny. yeah. All right. Well, what what else is going on with you? I mean, we got the ball. Everything's going great. What 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 else was what else we up to? Just just chilling. Yeah, honestly, just just enjoying it, embracing it in every moment, uh, and kind of learning and and trying to to better. You know, get better every day, regardless of in the lineup, not in lineup. Trying to find a way to to be productive and to be prepared for anything that may happen. Um, but I think the only thing that's new is um. I may go to to play winter ball in the Dominican here in, oh. uh, in, in a couple months. So cool! I'm gonna go experience what? that and see what that's like. <laughs> yeah, you got a, they got a team lined up for you. Yeah, I'm playing for the uh, Aguilas del Tibao. Okay, okay, cool. Yeah. that's pretty yeah. when, cool. When would you head down? Because I mean, their season starts pretty early. Yeah, they they start October 20th. I want to say is the first game. So he, I just talked to him about coming down whenever our season was over, whenever mm-hmm. they may be. He said, "Come down as soon as you can afterwards." Uh, so, I'll, but I'll just be doing the first month, going from I think you said October fifteenth, sixteenth ish to like November twentieth. I think is like the first month. Um, Have you ever been to the Dominican? Did you ever go to one of the the, the no. workouts there? Or? No, no. Okay. So I'm, I'm I'm really excited. I've heard some really good things about like not just the country in general, like how beautiful it is, but I've heard some good things about the the, the winter ball league that that it's competitive. There's, there's oh, yeah. talent, and that they they just want to win, so they they take it seriously down there. No, they, they, you know, you can you can look at, at winter league box scores and see names. No shit, Neftali Feliz, Alexi yeah. Gondo, guys from Rangers past who are still out there and they throw, they throw breaking balls. They're you know, and it's competitive. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, they, they draw big crowds too. Uh, yeah. Heard. Yeah. No, that's going to be great. The, you'll have to stop by the Rangers facility. Uh, it's it's really nice. It's in Boca yeah. Chica, which is between. Uh, the Dominican and, uh, or I, I'm sorry, the, it's the Domingo and uh, La Romana. It's just, it's just off the road. Yeah. And, uh, but, and then, and then look out over the outfield wall and you can see how shitty their old place was. <laughs> it's amazing oh, they I, ever I signed, remember. You're right. It's amazing yeah. they ever signed to anybody. And, yeah, that's uh, funny. but anyway, all right, John, you got, what do you got for John? Oh, just a couple of fun stuff. So since you've been up here, I mean, you've been to Arlington a couple of times this year, but are you finding, what are your local spots? You finding any place around there? You're hanging, getting some, uh, maybe a new restaurant you discovered or something like that that that, that you're hitting. Yeah. Okay. So I got a couple spots. I there's a there's a there's a taco place. I should have looked up the name. I I don't know why I didn't. Think- uh oh. <laughs> oh. Sorry. Oh, he's there. there you I'm here. I'm he, here. Yeah. But uh, okay. I don't know why I didn't why I didn't prepare myself better. But I don't know the name of the taco place. I'll get it to you. But there's a really good taco place here in like downtown Dallas ish, and it's is pretty good i went and it was funny i had this like weird street running tacos was, like street tacos yes like street mexican tacos and i had this weird running with with this guy who i got my food and i was sitting down eating by myself and he kind of sat down he was like can i join you and i was like sure why not maybe i'm in the mood for a little chatter and we kind of <laughs> got into conversating and he was like yeah like i've been trying local food spots around dallas 
He said, this is one of the, the better taco spots I've had. So it was kind of cool that we kind of got to bond. We had some bonding over tacos. But Did he ever figure uh, out you're a big leaguer? No, I, I, I tried to keep keep my yeah, personal yeah. life away. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> usually whenever some I meet some random people, I usually say I, I do real estate, which is not a lie because I do do real estate in the off season. But, oh. yeah, so I, I try to keep, I try I to keep the, the baseball stuff away. <laughs> but uh, there's uh, we went, me and my girlfriend went to a coffee place. A couple of days ago, I want to say, or maybe yeah, a couple of days ago. It's called uh, Ascension Coffee. Uh, it's in I don't know exactly where it's at, but it's pretty good. It's it's pretty solid, solid place. Ascension. Uh, are you, do y'all live in Dallas, or are you out in Arlington? So we're closer to the Dallas area. We're not in Dallas, but we're closer to the the, the Dallas area. I don't know exactly. Where it's, I think it's like Oak Cliff or Oak Lawn or something like yeah, that. Yeah, Oak Cliff. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, there, 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 there's one of each, so I don't. Uh, <laughs> they're pretty close. They're actually pretty close yeah. to each other, right there. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I kind of from that all that area, so I know it pretty well. So yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you just jump on thirty and head right down to the ballpark. Yeah, yep. Yeah. So yeah, so that that place is pretty good. We really like. I really like the sushi place that I tried last time I was up here. It's called Komodo. It's a it's, a, it's like a big town spot. It's not a low key spot. Uh, yeah. I tried it in Miami. And when I went to Miami and it was really good. And then I saw they opened one down here in Dallas. So I was like, I got to go try the one here. And oh, uh, it's, it's pretty good. I like that place a lot. So All the right. girlfriend's with you, huh? The girlfriend's with me, yes. Now, okay. is she back from high school or when did you meet her? No, uh, funny story. We met last year at the end of the season in Austin. She's from Austin. So I met her when I was in Round Rock. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah. All right. So, right. Kind of. We, we, we hung out once and, you know. It's, she just, okay. you know, kind of, kind of, yeah, kind of. She kind of loved me from from the day we met, and she couldn't get enough, so we ended up hanging oh, yeah. out. You, hey, got yeah. the, you got the, you got the juice, right? The yeah, juicy, that's why. Yeah, it's funny. It's, it's hard. He knows it's hard. that young. He knows that young it. kid vernacular, or whatever it is. That <laughs> what, is this, what, what about real estate? What do you do in the? You, Are you a realtor? Known stuff uh, in, so, in Arizona. Yeah, I do it in Arizona. So I help my dad. My dad is big into the real estate business. And so I ended up doing a program uh, an off season ago. I think it was last off season to try to get my license. And I finished everything right up until spring training started. And so the only thing I have to do left is is pass the state the exam. I did the school. I did my I passed my school exam and everything. So all I have to do is pass the state exam to be officially licensed. But for the most part, like I did everything. So I'm and I already helped my dad. We are we've been doing some real estate stuff as like uh, investing stuff for kind of a while now because he loves doing that. So that's, that's what cool. I do. Yeah, it's, I, it's I work for property stuff. management company. I'm licensed realtor. Do all that yeah. stuff. So man, we'll we'll have some talking to do there and for talk sure. about that for, for sure. Okay, this is one of my favorite questions. I, I want to ask somebody about this. Tell people the difference between travel in the big leagues and travel in AAA. Now in AAA, <laughs> y'all do fly. You yeah. do flying where you're going to AAA. What's the difference between <laughs> flying on that that charter and flying with the with the AAA team? Tell people how it, it it's good to be in the big leagues. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's definitely good to be in the big leagues. So definitely leaving at whatever time the team decides and whatever time you want to go. As soon as everybody's on board, we go. Is 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 nice. You don't have to wake up in AAA. It's Southwest flights most of the time. Sometimes yeah. it's, it's an American or a Delta, depending on if there's no Southwest. But most of the time it's Southwest. And so you are you don't have a seat. So you it's whatever time you get on the flight, you try to find the best available seat possible. So sometimes right. you end up people end up getting stuck with middle seats. And I'm one of the smaller guys, as in like skinny-wise. So I always have to try and sit in the middle to make sure other people are comfortable, you know? Yeah. And so I always end up getting stuck with the middle seat most of the time. Um mm-hmm. And also in AAA, most of the time you don't travel like right after games. So that way you have a full off day. You travel on your off day. So you really most of the time don't have an off day unless you're at home for two weeks or on the road for two weeks. Or it's like a bus where we go to Sugar Land, which is two, three hours away. And then Oklahoma City, which is like five or six. So those are the only times where you really have off days because every other off day you're traveling. And it could be a connecting flight. It could be a direct flight. But you're losing time when when you come back to Texas coming from the west coast um so the, that's kind of some of the stuff where it's like i kind of wish i had a full day to to relax and and take care of my body and and recover you know but i mean big league flights you you leave whenever you want you you have a whole road to yourself you're not worried about people cramming you're not worried about a middle seat uh i mean being on security either 
or yeah, you have like to go through. PSA. Sometimes, I mean, sometimes, but all they do is just check your backpack, and make sure you don't have anything. Right. It's not sit, sitting there waiting with a bunch of other people and kind of sitting in lines and stuff. So, I mean, it's 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 definitely a perk and is it, food. It's, they get you good food on those not, flights. Oh, they get you anything you want. I, I mean, I come in and there's there's chick there's Chick Fil A there's there's hamburgers there's I mean uh, everything. <laughs> It's yeah, crazy. I, it's I, like there's a chef on the flight. I, I was flying somewhere. This is, I don't know, before the pandemic. And I was sitting there. I was doing a phone interview. Uh, and uh, I was waiting for my flight. And then all of a sudden, I was like, hey, wait a second. That's Nick Martinez. And, like, and like the whole Round Rock team was, was walking, to connecting to a flight. Really? So I was able to stop and talk to a couple of them. But, yeah, I mean, <laughs> there's no connections in the big leagues. You hop on the plane. You go where directly where you're supposed to go, yeah. and you don't have you know, it's 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 the only way to go. I mean, that's no, nice for sure. Yeah. Now, do well, you have a roommate in our Uh, so usually you do. My roommate for most of the year was was Huff was Hammy. So, yeah. so when I got called up, I think I don't know if he didn't want to have a roommate, if he was over having a roommate, or if maybe you know he was just like, oh, I miss. I miss Jonathan. I don't want to have a different roommate, but he ended up getting his room for the rest of the year. And when you get for your room and trip, your own room in AAA, you have to pay a little bit, like kind of have to pay the difference of whatever the team pays for half and you pay for half. So right. he ended up doing that for the, for kind of the last two months of the season. So I got a, I got my own room, not having to pay for, for, for a, a couple times because technically Sam is still my roommate. And since he's paying, I, I yeah. And so, so, we did that for a couple times, and then and then it was like, hey, we hooked you up for a little bit. Now it's time for you. If you want your own room, you have to pay for it. If not, you can have a roommate. And I was like, I kind of like having my own room. It's kind of nice having your own privacy and not having to worry about anybody waking up or anything happening, whatever. So I ended up paying for my room the last couple of times we're on the road. And, I mean, it's nothing beats having your own room. <laughs> yeah, big leagues, though, you get your own room. They get, they, you get your they, own room. Get, yeah. yeah. You get no doubt about it. Yeah. 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 Jeff, anything else for him? No, no, just uh, I'm not working today, but tomorrow I want the name of that taco place. I'm going yeah. to I'll, I'll do some recon and I'll get back to you guys. For do sure. some recon. I may be out there tomorrow too, man. I, and and, uh, and do, Jonathan, listen, you guys are big leaguers. Stopping down to talk to us is, is, is just so appreciated. Of course, we always love to see you when we're in the clubhouse there. Come up and say hello and do that. But uh, I, we can't thank you enough for taking time to stop and talk to us, bud. No, thank you guys for having me.